Hello, uh, welcome. Uh, thank you so much for joining, uh, joining us tonight. Uh, my name is Daniel Frost, uh, and I'm an illustrator. Um, I've been educated here in London at the RCA, um, and I've been a professional illustrator for seven years, uh, and I work for international clients. Um, before I go into the project, I, maybe some of you are unfamiliar with my work, so I'd like to show you some examples. Uh, I'm also going to show you some examples from my previous trips, uh, my previous kind of research trips, uh, just to give you an example of where I kind of came from and where I've got to with the Greenland trip. So, oh, well, just in case you didn't know my name, there it is in big. Uh, <laughs> So uh, I do uh, editorial illustrations um, for the New York Times and for DZ. Um, I quite like these kind of projects because they're quite quick turnarounds and, and they're quite sort of um, fun and intuitive ways of, uh, of, in, uh, of um, looking at sort of current events. Um, alongside this kind of work, I also uh, do children's books and that's kind of a mixture of fiction and nonfiction. Um, and I've been published by Wide-Eyed, Hogsden Mini Press, and Hatto. Um, I love kind of working on books because you get this chance to sort of create a world of and these kind of characters and different scenarios. And you know, I find I find that a really fun. But they're actually they're, they're quite a long process, so it's nice to have sort of smaller projects to do in between. Uh, in addition to that, I also do uh, uh, advertising, um, and I love doing this kind of work as well because it's you, you rarely ever get to see your work at such large scale. Um, I've done a lot of stuff for Transport for London as well as East Midlands trains. Um, uh, alongside this, I also um, I like to do um, uh, research trips um, just to kind of like sort of keep myself sort of connected with my own individual um, practice and you know to keep myself sort of developing. Um, um, so I, I really sort of push myself to try and do this kind of stuff at least sort of once a year. Uh, the first trip that I went on was uh, to Thailand, and this was actually uh, a residency uh, that I was asked to do um, in Bangkok. Uh, and this is kind of where I first started sort of falling in love with sort of traveling and, and sort of making work. Um, I was very inspired by the sort of, you know, by the environment, by the nature, and um, when I was there and I was making a lot of sketches and just having really a lot of fun with kind of making work while I was there. Um, and I felt that it was kind of like, it was, it was nice and kind of important to kind of do this sort of stuff. Um, this book, had, this actually ended up being a book which was published by Hattie, which actually wasn't my sort of intention. Um, I mean, really I just wanted to sort of push it and try and have as much fun with it as possible. Uh, but it's nice that it kind of ended up being a book published by someone. The next trip I went on was uh, a trip to Switzerland. And this again was a residency, it was with a project called The Jaunt, where they send you on a trip for a certain amount of time and you develop a print. Um, and this was kind of where I sort of first sort of fell in love with quite sort of otherworldly places. Um, I don't know if, if you've ever been to Switzerland, but it's amazing. It kind of has this sort of, um, you know, these great big sort of amazing mountain ranges and then kind of, and, and in one part it's kind of forest and then sort of icy sort of landscape, so it's quite kind of otherworldly and, um, and beautiful. Um, also, I, there is quite a lot of similarity between this and the Greenland trip, um, because most of the images were made on the train um, from uh, Geneva to St. Moritz. A lot of the images were actually um, quite cinematic, because everything was kind of seen behind a frame. Um, and that's kind of something which I kind of came back to later on within the, the Greenland, um, the Greenland paintings. So, on to Greenland. <laughs> um, so, this is the most recent trip, uh, trip I took. Um, after Switzerland, I was quite sort of fascinated with going to another place that had this kind of otherworldly quality, um, but maybe a bit more extreme. I'm quite fascinated with kind of the Arctic and the Antarctic and places that are quite kind of inhospitable and kind of, uh, and I find these intriguing and quite uh, humbling in a way. Uh, it's kind of like sort of being on another planet. So when I got asked to go to Greenland, I jumped at the chance. Um, it was a friend who asked me to go, uh, and um, it was really exciting. Um, 
I kind of didn't know, really know what to expect. So I, um, so I don't think I fully prepared fully for the trip. I remember we were flying from, uh, from Copenhagen to Greenland. Um, so I was checking the sort of temperature between the two places and it didn't look like there was that much difference between the two. But when I got off the air, airplane at Ganges Luswak Airport and it was minus 27 degrees, I realized I was in for a bit of a shock. Um, so I had to sort of think about my sort of process a little bit. Uh, normally the work I, I make when I'm on these trips is kind of, I do a lot of work on site because there's a nice kind of intuit, intuitiveness to the, to the drawings. Um, but obviously you can't really do that when you're kind of outside in, you know, minus 15. And trying to draw with Arctic gloves is actually quite difficult <laughs> as well. So, um, so, but that kind, of, that kind of gave like a nice extra sort of, um, a, a different kind of feeling to the drawings. The drawings were a little bit more hazy and a bit more fuzzy, and that kind of added to this, to the otherworldly sort of feeling of, of, of the place. There was kind of many, many aspects that were quite inspiring about Greenland, and one of the main things was color. Like, color was kind of appeared everywhere. It was sort of, uh, it was in the, the sort of sky, in the landscape, and also sort of the color that was sort of brought by, um, by, by humans being there, kind of, you know, the sort of brightly colored houses and the sort of ships. Um, we're all quite amazing against this sort of quite pale and, um, you know, tonal sort of landscape. Um, also, time and date, uh, time and uh, time had a had a sort of big factor in sort of how how the colours kind of changed because because when I was there, it was November. Um, it was uh, and it was only three hours of daylight sort of per uh, every day, and and it kind of it kind of made the sky like actually quite a dominant, sort of a dominant object because like it felt like you kind of had the same amount of the same amount of light, but it was just condensed into a into a shorter period of time. So it's kind of felt more intense. Uh, we were also very lucky enough to see the aurora borealis every night, which was absolutely incredible. If you ever get a chance to go, you should definitely go because it's uh, it's absolutely incredible. Um, there was also, as I spoke about, industrial color. So there was um, the bright sort of red of like ships, and and there's also the sort of fluorescent colors from kind of you know outdoor clothing and things like that. And that was something that really fascinated me and wanted wanted me to. I wanted. I felt like I wanted to include that in the in the paintings. Um, and I kind of felt like when I was there, these sort of bright colors were kind of like sort of man trying to sort of. Um, make its claim in this sort of um, quite sort of inhospitable and kind of scary sort of environment. As I mentioned, sort of drawing was quite difficult outside, so I spent a lot of the time actually drawing from inside. I mean, I did take a few photos, hence why I've got them up here, but um, another thing that I didn't realize is that extreme cold actually makes the batteries on mobile phones and and cameras actually wear down quite, quite quickly. So if you're out and taking photos for a couple of hours, the, it'll actually just die. So you kind of, you couldn't really take that many photos. But that was quite nice and something quite interesting as well because, because I was drawing so much inside, you kind of got these sort of framework of the, of the, um, of the places where I was drawing from, like old churches and boats and, and things like that. And it kind of gave the images a sort of cinematic feel. Uh, which w was really fascinating and kind of, you know, uh, made the images sort of a little bit more kind of mysterious. In addition to this, as well as the as well as the kind of the framing, because you were kind of drawing people and uh, drawing uh, inside, and people were actually quite close, so it kind of the people scale was uh, was bigger across the landscape, so you could it it kind of created another frame, but also sort of because they were sort of almost silhouetted and the landscape was stronger, it kind of added to the sort of mysterious and sort of um, quite strange feeling of the place. As you can imagine, the landscape was absolutely incredible. It kind of, I mean, from there, it looks like the sort of surface of the moon. Uh, and that was something which was really fascinating to me. Um, but it also changed throughout the day um, with the sun only kind of her, just popping above the horizon for three hours. This, it kind of made the the shadows kind of quite long, and, and it kind of revealed certain objects and, and took certain objects away from the um, from view. So 
in, even if you were there for a couple of days, you could you, you, the landscape kind of changed and sort of made it even seem even more unfamiliar than it than it actually was. Not only that was it was kind of also parts of the landscape were sort of just otherworldly in general without sort of tricks of the light. Um, you had kind of ice melt that looked like kind of great big sort of mirrors and, 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 and crevasses that sort of curled into each other, which all kind of added to this sort of really sort of weird and sort of otherworldly feeling of the place. So I kind of looked at that and with my approach in the paintings was I, I kind of wanted to sort of stay quite loose and intuitive with the drawings, um, but also try and rework and sort of layer over areas. So you kind of really got this feeling that we were kind of sort of just visitors in this kind of sort of quite strange place. Clothing also kind of had sort of quite a big, uh, a big effect on the, on the work that I made there. Um, because it was very, very cold, people tended to wear lots of layers and it kind of, um, it kind of took people's kind of sort of personality away from them and they kind of became more like shapes and, 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 and that sort of made it quite sort of feel quite alien and, and, and also people had like, you know, everyone was wearing sort of quite heavy snowshoes. Um, so that sort of act of sort of walking on the snow and, and also that they had this kind of layered and padded clothes kind of made it look like people were sort of walking on a sort of on another planet or something like that. And I couldn't help thinking about astronauts or, you know, kind of strange sort of uh, figures. Um, and on my return from Greenland, I also uh, continued to sort of make paintings and, and sort of the, the sort of memories of the trip and sort of stories that I was told when they were there sort of made their way into the drawings that I made. I, I didn't actually see this, by the way. It was sort of partly from a story which we heard, but I, I kind of found it fascinating and, and wanted to sort of capture it. But I think that's what's really interesting about kind of taking these kind of trips and experiencing something real and then that kind of influence in the drawings is that it kind of gives a nice sort of a mix of sort of believability and... Um, but also fantasy as well. So it's, it, I think it's quite a nice kind of mix and it kind of in, enhances the images. Um, at the time being, I don't really know how this project is gonna turn out. At the moment, I'm just kind of like sort of playing around with ideas. It might kind of mix with another project or become something, you know, and, 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 um, and become completely different. Or it might just sort of, might just, you know, stay the same, but for the time being, I'm just kind of having fun with it because I find the, the journey is more exciting sometimes than the destination. Thank you so much. Uh, that's it. <laughs>